How's it going guys? Welcome back to the channel Pete's Carport and as promised we're diving right into Zay's new to him car which is a 97 S500. It's got that beautiful interior. A lot of you guys had commented on what it was. Palomino, Cognic and a lot of you guys said it's a very rare combination and I gotta say I've never seen it. Um, I might have seen photos out there with somebody that has this but I've never seen this color combination in person. It is by far my favorite and it seems to be your guys's favorite too so we've got to do this car justice and i said on the last video the first thing we're going to do is tackle the rust now these are very common area rust so i decided let's take the tail lights out which are going to be replaced anyways and we might as well pull the bumper and make sure there is no other rust and good news let's go ahead and take a look at it there is really only the rust that we could see so beyond that there's nothing crazy uh, and this is a very common area because water collects in here uh, from rain and then uh, clogged drains and so forth and then starts to accumulate and create this rust area here so we're going to go ahead and tackle this i'm going to show you guys how i do it and um, the best way to do it in my opinion on a budget and that's what we're going to do so we're not looking at perfection we're looking at stopping the current rust from spreading and then fixing the issue and making it look as good as we can with minimal tools and minimal experience on doing anything like this so i didn't bring it with me but we're going to be using a por 15 which is an excellent product to basically convert rust it's a really thick black type paint uh, and it does come the kit that i bought does come with a, a degreaser and also a surface prep so what we need to do right now is grind down everything that we can see we got to be careful not to hit any components that are going to get damaged uh, so i'm going to use a grinding wheel where i can and then we'll go in with a wire brush or uh, some sandpaper and get what we can now like i said the good news is zay thought maybe there'd be rust up underneath this bumper and there is not doesn't look like the car's ever been in any type of rear end accident from what i see right now uh, and there's no crazy rust along this so this is another very common uh, rust area on mercedes because uh, these dams here what happens is water collects in there just like up in here and creates a lot of rust now he does have a little here uh, which is where all the water was collecting so we're gonna go ahead and grind that down protect that but it looks like there's some solid metal under there uh, we'll clean out our gasket that goes around there put that back in and just kind of clean off all of the area so that we don't have any further rust and there is one other area i forgot to mention along here that i noticed when i was pulling the tail lights off so we're going to grind that down put some protection on there and i'll talk to him about what we can do about possibly touching this up with some um, color matching paint and kind of blending it so we might end up doing that on this video probably uh, further down the road but we'll do a series on this car this is going to be the first of many things we do so let's dive back into it let's start grinding down what we can and then i will talk to you guys about the uh, por 15 and how to prep it Well guys, it's time for a fill-in, talk about where we're at with the project and where we're gonna be going. Now I went ahead and pulled out a lot of my bodywork stuff and I have an idea of exactly what we need to do and the direction I wanna go for this. And it's gonna be something you guys can do at home too and it's gonna come out really, really nice. Now originally I was thinking that the rust on this was gonna be minor enough to where we can use the reinforced filler like this, which has strands of fiberglass hair in it. Works really, really good if you have um, minor holes or even a little bit bigger holes but when it's this large you need to have some sort of reinforcement typically you're going to want to weld in some metal but this is going to allow you guys without welding skills to fix something like this with stuff you can pick up from the store so what i'm going to do is use this fiberglass mat here now before we do any of this we are going to use that por 15 like i talked about i got to go home and grab that so we'll be prepping that right after we make this fiberglass mold that I'm about to tell you about. So what we're going to do is make a fiberglass mold using this section here. And the reason why is this mirrors this area here. So what we'll do is put some Vaseline down so the fiberglass does not stick. We'll fiberglass a piece all across here, up underneath here, around here to make a mold. Now that mold will be then placed on top of this, but we're going to reinforce it really well in the back of it. 
uh, drill out the hole for here and cut out the hole for here. And then we'll use these areas that have nice metal, basically glue down the cap. So we'll be using uh, fiberglass filler along here uh, to allow that cap to stick on and we'll be putting it on top of each section. So we're gonna make this a nice smooth transition to where you won't really be able to tell. And this is gonna be covered anyways, but we wanna make it look as nice as possible. I also went ahead and ground down this corner over here and we're gonna be using body filler over here tonight to make a nice smooth transition. I'm gonna attempt to use some sort of color matching paint to kind of blend through here. It's not gonna be perfect, but it will look really good from a short distance. So this is gonna come out really good guys. And this is all stuff you can do at home on a budget. Uh, and not have to have any type of crazy skills like welding. You don't have to go and buy a welder. This is all stuff, like I said, you can pick up from a local auto parts store. So this is what we're gonna be using here, this fiberglass mat. I think I got this from Advanced Auto. And we're gonna be using these different fillers here. And I'll explain the transition of fillers that we'll be using and also the fiberglass resin that you'll need for the fiberglass mat. These are just spatulas here and I'm gonna use a paintbrush to paint on uh, some of the fiberglass resin onto our mat so that it goes on nice and smooth. These are the, this is the hole drill that I'm gonna be using to drill out our uh, lock mechanism. So without further ado, let's get started. And I will be speeding through a lot of this, but wanted to explain exactly what we're gonna be doing. All right, guys, it's time to move on to our POR 15 step of this process. Now, this is amazing stuff. It is a little expensive, but this stuff goes a long way. I bought the small kit around uh, 30 bucks. I think I got it for 22 with discounts, so not too bad, uh, but it does come with the degreaser, the metal prep, and the paint. It is a small bottle, like I said, but it goes a long way. This will do me for several projects. Uh, and like I said, this is amazing stuff, but keep in mind, you wanna make sure you don't get it on your hands or any of your skin because it won't come off for about a week. Trust me, guys, it's happened to me. So make sure you follow the directions because you do need to keep the surface wet during your first two stages. And if you're applying uh, POR 15 to an area that's going to be um, accessible to light, you wanna make sure you put a top coat on it. You do not want it to be uh, out in the UV. So we're putting this underneath a surface, but we're still probably gonna hit it with um, some primer and some paint anyways, just cause we wanna make it look nice. So we'll be doing that as our final step on this. So let's go ahead and get started. Like I said, I'm gonna fly through a lot of this. I just wanted to explain a little bit of how this works. All right, we went ahead and cleaned down the uh, Vaseline off our fiberglass piece here. And I'm gonna apply um, this heavy duty extra strength uh, body filler, which has the fiberglass strands in it across this area, just to give us extra strength before we drill that hole. And we'll also use that same stuff along here to allow this to uh, stay on the vehicle. So it'll give it extra strength on the vehicle. And then we'll put some on the outside to blend it in as well. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way and then we can move on to attaching this to the car.
So guys, I'm in between coats on the main section here and I figured this is perfect timing to talk about everything that we use and the steps we took to make it look like this. Now, by no means is this perfect. In fact, I have been battling time and battling rain almost every single day at the allotted time that I have to finish this. So it's kind of dragged out a lot longer than I wanted it to. And this was a perfect night. The weather was nice. It doesn't look like it's gonna storm anytime soon. So I can get this color laid down, get a clear coat put on here, at least with this main section and let this dry overnight. And then we're gonna hit this corner piece here and blend that. But I didn't wanna do all that at once uh, because I wanted to make sure I taped off certain areas. So let's go ahead and look up close here because like I said, I'm in between coats. The main thing I was concerned with looking really good was this top section here because everything else is gonna be covered and just this front section here. By no means is it perfect, but I did spend some more time on that than I did in these inner sections that are gonna be completely covered. Now, let's talk about what we use and even the color that I decided to go with and why I chose that. So we started off with uh, sheets of fiberglass like this, that heavy mat, and we use fiberglass resin. So if you're gonna be looking at creating the mold, that's what we did. Now I used just standard Vaseline, as you guys saw in the beginning as a way of being able to pull that pla that fiberglass mold off so it doesn't just stick to the metal because you do not want to lay this down on just bare metal. It will stick and you'll never get it off. So that's how we created that mold. Uh, and then we moved on to using reinforced filler. Now, this filler has strands of fiberglass in it, so it's a lot heavier uh, than as we move down here. And this will create a very, very rough surface. So you want to make sure you use this as a strengthening part and then move on to the reinforced filler. So once again, a fiberglass filler, but this doesn't have any strands in it, so it's a much smoother filler. Uh, we use this as a um, almost final coat on all of the parts so far. And then to fill in little pinholes after done sanding with this, uh, you're gonna use your standard body filler. Now you might have a brand Bondo. Uh, this is what Advanced Auto switched over to from Bondo, and that's why I've got some Bondo stuff uh, and some Evercoat stuff. So this is all bought at Advanced Auto, so you guys could pick this up as well. And then let's talk about sanding. So I just used a uh, standard uh, vibrating sander here. So nothing expensive is probably 40, 50 bucks and uh, a block. So this is just a standard block that you can pick up at the auto parts store. In fact, this might be from Advance and some sheets of, I use 120. You can use anywhere from 80 to probably, you know, 180, 200 as your main sanding piece because you wanna make sure it's thick enough or heavy enough to uh, grind down some of the uh, filler and some of the uh, fiberglass. Now, the lower the number, the heavier the fiberglass, but the deeper the scratches will be. So you gotta kinda go in progression. I also used a cutoff wheel or a grinder, uh, and I used a grinding disc here, uh, and that allowed me to kinda smooth out some of the stuff prior to sanding. It was more of a, for me to cut down some of that fiberglass because it was a little wavy, and also to cut out any metal pieces or anything like that that you might need to cut out, uh, grind down rust etc like we did in the beginning then we moved on to uh, finalizing what we're going to be doing and i use this filler primer now this just happened to be the color that i had but you can use pretty much any of the darker colors as an undercoating uh, this is going to need to be sanded down it usually leaves a more rough surface so i use 600 grit sandpaper after putting this on i ended up filling some more of the spots because I, was, I wasn't super happy with the way the fiberglass was looking so i ground down a little bit more filled a little bit more and sanded it down uh, you guys didn't see that on film, but I ended up doing that in some sections. 
options. And then I hit it again with the uh, standard primer and that can be just painted right over as long as your surface is smooth underneath. And then this is what I kind of came up with. I did a little research and I kind of knew Duplicolor had a color uh, that was more of a universal black that a lot of people said works really well on the W140 on forums. And this is the color and it seems to be matching pretty well. Now we'll know a little bit more uh, once we paint that corner section because that's gonna be blending right up into the paint. Uh, and then finally, oh, we're gonna go ahead and put a clear coat. Now you might wanna use a 2K clear. I don't have any. It's something you do have to order typically. Uh, it's a two part where you pop the bottom of it. I've used it in the past. It's amazing stuff. But since 99% of what we're gonna be doing today is gonna be covered, I'm just gonna use standard Rust-Oleum clear coat. It's a single base, so it won't hold up as well to uh, sunlight and so forth, but it's gonna do the job in the area that we're doing it. So that's about it, guys. Don't, don't be afraid to reach out to me on Instagram. That's the best way to reach me. If you have questions about this, I'd love to walk you through it. I am not a professional, but I've done this quite a bit. And as you guys can see, the outcome every time I do this gets better and better. And I'm really starting to enjoy uh, fixing these type of pieces. So let's move on. Let's finish this up and then we'll move on to that corner piece. I figured perfect timing in between coats to just show you guys what we use on this project. All right, guys, so let's move on to this corner section here where we're gonna have to blend our paint. Now, what I wanna do is tape off a hard line section. This is gonna be a section significantly outside of where we're gonna paint, but allow us to cover areas that we do not wanna hit with paint or overspray at all. So we're gonna do that, and then we'll cover this whole area. I sanded significantly outside of the area that we're going to be painting with the 600 grit. That allows me to uh, blend the paint. Now I'm going to use what I like to call the Chris Fix method because that's where I learned this and that's rolling a piece of paper uh, or in this case a pamphlet like that and that will allow the paint to hit up under there and make it a smooth transition as compared to just having a rough edge when you peel this tape off you'll see an edge. Now, if you did do it that way, you could um, lightly sand and polish and blend it that way, but this is gonna keep us from having to do so much um, sanding to blend the paint. We're still gonna have to wet sand and polish the whole thing, but it's gonna be a much smoother transition. So let's go ahead and tape this off so we can start hitting it with our primer and then the paint. Well guys, that's gonna wrap this video up and I could not be happier with the outcome of this project. Guys, it definitely surpassed my expectations, but keep in mind, it is nowhere near perfect. There are definitely things you can see when you get up close, especially in this paint color. But my God, from just a short distance, it blends right in and we haven't even started to detail this car. So I wanted to leave this car, as you can see, a little dirty because we're gonna be doing a full detail restoration uh, on an upcoming video. We're gonna do a full paint correction and we're gonna go ahead and polish this entire car out and ceramic coat it. So look forward to that video coming out. But my God, look at the outcome of what we did today, guys. And like I said, this is all stuff you can pick up locally, you can do yourself. You don't need to have any type of special skills. I just started doing this not too long ago and you can see the outcome is really, really good. You can barely tell that it's ever been repaired and that paint actually blended really well back here. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you guys have any questions about doing something like this yourself, even if it's on a different panel or a different type of rust, let me know. I'm learning as I go and I hope you guys are learning with me. You guys have an awesome day, a blessed week, and I'll catch you on the next video.